The first input that's highly used in wheat that does not make as much of a difference as people think it does. Something to cut back in a low... I mean, you got to really cut... You need to cut costs to stay profitable. Wheat wheat drops in price, um, you know, 50, 60 bushel wheat. What's the first thing Johnny's going to change up in standard... Air drill, some fertilizer through the drill, and then that's, throw... That's the only option is... and that, Well, and then they just throw the rest on in the spring. The rest, maybe a little more, most some more nitrogen, and who knows? Some I would, P and K. Heavy yeah. P and K use, some zinc, micros, et cetera. Okay. Well, if, if your majority of your P is used just in the fall, and that's the only time you're going to do it, thinking of that your, your plant available phosphorus is going to come from those pounds you put on in May. That's too long of a time. It's probably going to find something to bind to, mm-hmm. you know, within that time period. So what I would look at is when you're doing your air drill and you're putting some fertility that way is, I mean, phosphorus is key, helping getting roots down. But I wouldn't put your full load of phosphorus. Put a little bit. Put a little bit of phosphorus. I do th- a little bit of nitrogen will help too, you know, get that stimulation. If you're putting all your K on in the fall, you're going to get a little bit of an effect in the fall but more than likely it's going to get tied up or you're not gonna be able to change much later on so if you're actually trying to get a response from k i would say you need to be doing that at green up or even a little bit later than that um so i'd say that would be the biggest thing maybe it's not uh changing the fertility dollars or cutting fertility dollars is putting the fertility dollars where you get the bigger roi or if you are going to cut i would look at your Phosphorus numbers, I mean, if your phos numbers, you know, is above that 35 P1, as long as the soil temp gets above, or is above 50 when you're planting, you're probably going to get that kick of phosphorus. Um, When it comes to potassium, you know, if those numbers are above 125 to 150, maybe it's something you just do a simulation play instead of just put removal rates, don't do growth rates. Simulation play. Next segue yes. in. Yes. So, so many people think, and when you say simulation, you're talking a foliar? Yep. Okay. Yep. So many people Stimulation, think that though. we are replacing soil applied fertility with a foliar applied fertility, which can be done a little tiny bit, right? To a point, yes. A little bit. Um, but what actually is being a, the goal in a proper foliar feed is plant signal response. Yes. Like, hey, we got this. We need more of it. Go get it, right? 100%. Okay. So, so like, if you're going in there doing a foliar feed, uh, definitely, like, a lot of these products in the foliar market, you know, you look at the actual pounds of that product, um, and it's not... It shouldn't make a difference. If you're thinking, I'm going to go put so much zinc on Mm -hmm. what you're really doing is if you're doing zinc or manganese as a foliar feed you're sending that or getting that plant to have a signal response saying that tasted good that was good i'm going to send out the message into my root exudates to help me find that more so pretty much you're making that plant um communicate better about what nutrients it wants to receive it's like a buffet you get a little bit of everything and then you go back for what you really like yeah yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same sense what you're doing with the foliar feed is you're trying to st- stimulate that crop saying, get more of this. Okay. So. Gotcha. Yep. Um, if a guy's shooting for 50, 60 bushel wheat, I say shooting for it. That's what, say that's what the average is. Okay. Um, how much, how much P and K in the fall would be a little bit of shot and some nitrogen? 10 pounds each? <laughs> I, I would say I'd do it on percentage based. Okay, explain that. So, let's just say, because everybody's soil type's going to be slightly different. P, sure. P and K levels are going to be slightly different. Sure. You know, so I would say at least, I would do 25%. Okay. Just to get that stimulation of the roots to get going down. Okay. Um, I also think there's a huge play here in, when is it planted? What's the soil temp when it's planted? All that jazz. Because if you're getting, let's just say the later end of wheat planting, mm-hmm you might actually want to bump that up to like 35% because you need those roots to grow now. Got it. 
to get those as far down. I see. Develop the plant because we're winter's coming yeah. faster. Yeah. Now, some of your earlier planted stuff, your soil temp's going to be warmer. There's going to be phosphorus. There's going to be potassium. You know, maybe you tune down in that area. Mm. Um, but more of a clear cut, I, I would say at least 25%. Of your fertility plan? Yeah. Got it. At least 25 And I'm not against using more. It's just you got to know, are you, like, with potassium, the longer it sits in the soil, it's hard to really change numbers there definitely if you're high in potassium like the field that we saw yeah i mean you're at seven percent potassium you need to work on how to get that plant to access that you don't need to apply your kids are gonna have potassium yeah yeah so i say that's the biggest thing i mean i mean at least 25 percent. you do need phos yeah some form of available phosphorus to help that root stimulate there in the beginning okay so gotcha Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major podcast platforms. Um, We're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.